how do you even know where I'm going? Like, I was like, what? I'm shivering. Have all three. <gasps> Thank you so much. I was so surprised. Hello. Hello. My name is Ayan. I'm from Canada. My name is Sharazad, and I'm from Canada. I'm an English teacher in Korea. I'm here study. We've been in Korea for about two years now. Before coming to Korea, I actually um, had a lot of Korean friends. Living in Toronto is very multicultural, so I was able to be friends with people from many different backgrounds. And studying at UFT, I also uh, met with a lot of Koreans who were studying for exchange and stuff like that. So I already knew that Koreans were very nice. That's why I came here, because I knew like if I, if I moved to Korea, I wouldn't have any problems with the Korean people. Even if they don't speak the same language as you, they really try to help you. I had many times where they don't speak English, I don't speak Korean, and we're just like... What? And they'd be really, really like, don't worry, we will help you. Today we will be talking about the top 5 most touching moments we've experienced in Korea. Number 1, my trip to Busan last year. My friend visited me from Canada and we went to Busan for like a weekend trip and we were visiting the different tourist spots and then we went to cultural village. So when we were going there, we got on a bus and I had the directions on my map and I was like following the different stops and whatever. And so we're sitting on this bus and there's a few people on the bus as well. And there was an old lady sitting next to me and all of a sudden she turns over to me and she starts speaking to me. And in the beginning, I didn't really understand what she was saying. And then I realized she was telling me to get off the bus. And I was like, ma'am, why are you telling me to get off the bus? Like, I don't, I don't understand. And then she was like really urgently telling me, you need to get off the bus. And then I realized she was trying to tell us that like in order to get to this village, we needed to get off the bus to transfer onto another bus that would take us up the hill because she said this bus does not go up the hill. And then in the beginning, I was like, how do you even know where I'm going? Like, I was like, what? And then by the time we realized, okay, like we need to get off, the door closed on the bus and the bus driver started moving. And then the entire bus, like everybody on the bus was yelling at this bus driver to stop the bus. They were like, these girls, they need to get off the bus. You need to stop the bus. And then he stopped the bus and we got off and we thanked everybody. But like, even after the bus drove off, me and my friend were looking at each other like, what just happened? Like the entire bus knew where we were going apparently. I found that very touching because first of all, this lady, she went out of her way to like help us because she didn't really have to do that. And for her to like understand, okay, these are foreigners. They're clearly here to like see tourist spots. They're about to miss their stop. For her to do that and for the entire bus come together and make sure that we got off to get to our destination, I found that very touching. Number two. So a lot of people know Canadians are known for being really kind, but I really think Koreans are also really kind people. So one day I was at school and it was um, break time. So I went outside to the convenience store and I was standing in front of the convenience store worker and I was just like, I was just shivering. And she's like, are you cold? And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then she went and left. And then she came back and she's like, here, a jacket. And I was so confused. At first, I didn't take the jacket because I couldn't understand why she was giving it to me. And I was like, oh, do you want me to like buy this jacket? In Korean, she's like, no, you can have it. And I was like, oh, thank you. So I took it and I put it on. And I was, then she was like, you have no scarf. And then she went back and brought me three different scarves. I said, choose which one you like. Wow. And then I was like, um, take your pick. This one. And she's like, have all three. <gasps> Thank you so much. I was so surprised. I didn't expect it. It was really cold and I forgot my jacket. Yeah, so I was really touched by that. And I still go to that community store all the time because. Like, Is she there? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, thanks for the jacket. Yeah. Number three, when I'm teaching my students, sometimes like they'll ask me, hey teacher, like, do you have a Korean name? Because my students have English names and I call them by their English names. So they're asking me, like, you know, since you live in Korea, teacher, do you have a Korean name? And I was like, no, I don't have a Korean name. And they said, would you like us to give you a Korean name? And I was like, you know, if you want, you can, you can give me a Korean name, that's fine. And I thought like maybe they'd be like joking and like come up with funny names or whatever but like they actually took it really serious and they like planned it out. So basically they looked at my name. First of all, I, I go by my last name and my last name is Ali. So they said, okay, so since your name is Ali, we can call you Adi, like in Korean. I don't know if that's like an actual Korean name or if that's a word, but they, they use that as my Korean name. And then uh, they took the letter S for my first name and made like a Korean last name for me. My Korean name that they gave me was Seo Adi, 
but not just giving me the name, like they actually spent time to like give me like a meaning for the name. Because I know in Korea, Korean names have meanings and like I guess most Koreans know the meaning of their name. So like they were like, okay, we gave you a name. Now we're going to give you a meaning for each character of your name. So my students know that I really like GOT7. And GOT7 fans are called Agase's teacher. A for your name will stand for Agase. So they were like asking me other questions. They were like, teacher, do you like go to concerts? Do you buy merch? I was like, yes, I do all that, kids. And they're like, teacher, you're rich. So Ri is rich. So your name is Agase Rich. I was like, thanks, kids. So that's my Korean name. Might not be meaningful to other people, but I found that very touching because I feel like they were trying to include me into like Korean society. They gave me like a Korean name. They were very thoughtful as well. So I found that to be very touching. I want a Korean name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my kids to give you one. Number four. Last year, actually, I was an English teacher in Korea. And during my vacation, I went to the States to visit my relatives. And when I was on the plane, there was a Korean family next to me. And I was really terrified of airplanes. So I was just sitting there like, and they were just looking at me like, is this girl okay? She looks like she's gonna die. And they were like giving me water and being really nice to me. And when we got to the States, they had some trouble um, understanding some of the directions. Their English wasn't the best, so I was trying to help them with my very, very limited Korean. They were so thankful that they asked to exchange cacao with me and said, when you come back to Korea, um, please contact us. So I thought like, oh, they're not really going to contact me when they get back to Korea. A week later, I got a message from the mother and she's like, we would like to take you for lunch. Her whole family and me all had lunch together and we spent the whole evening together. And to this day, I still am in contact with them and they made me really feel like I'm part of their family now. Because like, you know, when you're living in Korea, you're not, your family's not here, your friends yeah. are not here. Also, like if you work here or a student, you usually just go to work or just come home. So you might not even interact with anyone and you might feel like really lonely. And just having some people to talk to, even if you can't understand you, it just feels so touching and so warm feeling inside. And honestly, it made my experience here much better because I know a lot of other foreigners who are here and feel really alone sometimes. Number five. Last year, I lost my wallet on the subway and I literally didn't know what to do because I had my debit card in my wallet, I had my foreign ID, like I literally need that for everything in Korea. And I lost everything. And so I called my coworker, my Korean coworker, because I had no idea what to do. And she basically told me that she was going to help me. And she came to me at the station that I was at, but her mother also came along. So her mother literally took a bus, came all the way to the subway, that I, the subway station that I was at, to help me um, find my wallet because I didn't know where to even like start looking. So she was like talking to service people, yes. She was talking to them and they were like trying to help me find my wallet. And she gave them like her personal number. Like if you find the wallet, can you please contact me? Because like I, my Korean like is not that great. So like I found that very touching because her mother, like she's never met me before and she didn't have to go out of her way to like leave her house, get on a bus to like meet up with me. But she did that and she she tried very hard to like help me find my wallet. I wasn't able to find my wallet, but still she was she was very helpful, yeah. So I found that to be very touching. So I think Korean people go out of their way to really help people, especially foreigners, because like we're we're new to the country, we might not really know the language or like the know-hows of things. So I feel like I think people in Canada are really nice. I think they are, but I don't really think they go out of their way to help people. They might help you if they see you struggling a bit, but I don't think they'll like really watch you and be like, hey, I think this person needs help. I think um, Canadian people are very open people. We get in other people's business a lot. I feel like they're equally nice. I think they just express their, their kindness in different ways. I think that has to do with the culture as well. I would say Canadians are very open people. Canadians are more like quieter and a little more reserved, but they're still very nice people. It's just different personality, I guess. Yeah, different way of expressing their, yeah. their kindness. So today we talked about our most touching moments in Korea. So I was really shocked to see Korean people go out of their way to help me who, you know, I'm a foreigner, they don't know me. Many people might think Koreans are very shy and quiet, but I've experienced that they, they will go out of their way to help you, they will approach you. Even if there's a language barrier, they'll, they'll try their best to help you. If you see a foreigner, please don't be shy to talk to us because a lot of us are having a hard time actually making friends in Korea. If you see a foreigner, I mean, don't be creepy, but say hello or even if you can't speak the same language, it's okay to say hi and introduce yourself. 
because a lot of us are looking for friends too. If you liked today's video, please leave a comment on what you think we should talk about next. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! Bye!